We now move on to a ministerial statement uh, by Michael Matheson on police call handling. Can I uh, urge members, we, we will actually um, have a minute's silence following the minister's statement and then resume, but uh, members who wish to ask questions, I would urge them still to press their request to speak buttons uh, as soon as possible. And I call on Michael Matheson. Thank you, President Officer. I'm grateful for the opportunity to update Parliament on the progress with the transformation of Police Scotland's approach to call handling. In July of 2015, I directed Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary to undertake an independent assurance review of the operation systems and control division within Police Scotland. That review resulted in 30 recommendations for improvement and the Inspectorate has worked closely with Police Scotland and the SPA to implement the wide-ranging changes in that period since. In January 2017, HMICS published an update report which indicated good progress and I'm pleased to confirm that a further final report has been published today which again shows improvement. Indeed, HMICS has confirmed this morning that all 30 of the recommendations relating to their initial assurance review have now been discharged. In doing so, the inspectorate has commended the police service for the considerable priority which it has rightly attached to this work. I think it is important that we too recognise the efforts of all those involved. As a result of those efforts, Police Scotland has delivered a revised, stabilised staffing model for police call handling, ensured the service has the right number of people at the right time to manage the demands it faces, an improved approach to training, ensuring that those same individuals have the skills they need to support those members of the public who are seeking assistance, often in the most distressing and high-risk circumstances, and improved stability in key ICT infrastructure and systems, giving call handlers the tools they need to deliver the best service they can. The service has also implemented a number of important controls to ensure it maintains the necessary high standards that the public expect. Those include the establishment of a new dedicated quality assurance unit for contact command and control, and the implementation of a notable instance process, which allows the service to learn from those calls which haven't been handled as they should have been. That process and the calls highlighted through it have, of course, been the subject of previous exchanges in this chamber. Whilst the service itself would recognise such instances are the cause of regret, that process highlights the service's commitment to minimising the likelihood of these same mistakes being made again. This is key to openness, accountability and continuous improvement, and that is why it is so important. Of course, as recognised by HMICS in today's report, the reality is that we will never entirely eradicate risk when it comes to police call handling. It is a human endeavour and humans can make mistakes. In terms of broader context, over the last weekend, Police Scotland dealt with over 5,500 calls and roughly 16,000 calls to the 101 service. In total, the service dealt with over 16,000 individual incidents requiring some form of police response, of which 470 related to missing persons and 670 to domestic incidents. The service also dealt with 43 separate firearms incidents. I say this simply to outline the scale and complexity of policing and police call handling in Scotland today. HMICS reports that overall police call handling continues to perform well. Grades of service, that is the time taken to answer calls, is strong with 91% of 999 calls being answered within 10 seconds. The number of discontinued calls is proportionately low and continues to drop. And upwards of 94% of those members of the public who contact Police Scotland over the phone are satisfied with the service which they receive. 
Benchmarking Police Scotland's call handling against that of other forces is not straightforward. So the service has worked to identify alternative ways to assess the quality of the service it provides. To that end, in February of this year, the service secured formal accreditation from the Customer Contact Association. These achievements are down to the highly skilled and dedicated call handlers who work on our behalf each and every day. I welcome the steps being taken by the service to give credit to those individuals who were recognised at Police Scotland's annual C3 awards ceremony last month. As I have already touched on, these improvements have been delivered throughout a period of significant change, with far-reaching work having been undertaken to remodel Police Scotland's approach to call handling. It is clear that the effective management of that change, which has included the establishment of a single service centre to receive calls from across the country and the redesign of the service's approach to instant control, has been recognised by HMICS as a model of good practice. The adoption of robust planning and governance processes has delivered increased confidence. Whilst more effective communication with C3 within C3 Division has had a positive impact on the morale of staff and officers, all of whom will have been affected in some shape or form. As a result, Police Scotland now has an approach to call handling which will allow the public to experience the full benefits that come from a single police service. Spikes in call volume can be managed more effectively, resources can be deployed more flexibly, and national instance gripped in a way not previously possible. Of course, the hallmark of any effective organisation is its ability to continuously improve, and that is what we expect of Police Scotland going forward. The additional recommendations contained in this latest HMICS report should guide those efforts and I'm reassured that they align well with the wider programme of transformation being taken forward as part of the service's 2026 strategy. Good progress has been made but more can always be done and Police Scotland must maintain the momentum it has now built. The service's work to implement a new contact assessment model will ensure that future deployment decisions are based on a more robust understanding of risk and vulnerability, whilst the service's contact strategy will enable the public to engage with the service in a way which best meets their needs. The Scottish Government is supporting this work, including through the provision of £400,000 last year to support investment in new technology for C3. This builds on the £1.4 million that we made available to support initial improvements in call handling back in 2015. Of course, it is for the Scottish Police Authority to ensure that the necessary progress is being made in these areas. To that end, the Authority is currently considering, giving consideration to the establishment of a dedicated committee focusing on police reform and transformation, and I welcome this. That scrutiny will continue to be supported by HMICS, who will turn their attention to another critical part of the policing jigsaw in the coming year, the interface between the area control rooms and local police divisions. Sign officer, in closing, I'd like to put on record my continuing appreciation for the work of the inspectorate and offer particular thanks to the recently retired HM Chief Inspector Derek Penman for the valuable contribution he has made. Whilst we can never be complacent I'm confident that our police call handlers are better placed than ever to support communities in meeting the changing threats they face. And I look forward to seeing how the improvements I've described today can help lead to better outcomes for the people of Scotland. Can I thank you, Cabinet Secretary? And uh, we will take questions slightly later, but we're going to suspend for just over a minute and then we'll mark the minute silence at half past two. So we'll just suspend for a minute's time.
Thank you, and we resume business. And can I ask those in the chamber to join me in observing one minute's silence to remember those who sadly lost their lives and were affected by the Manchester Arena attack one year ago? Thank you very much. Can I thank colleagues and, in fact, those in the public gallery who joined us in observing a minute's silence. I'm now going to suspend business just for a minute or two before we resume. Thank you, uh, colleagues, and again, if we can resume business. Uh, we've he heard from the Minister. The Ministerial Statement will now take questions, starting with question number one from Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement. Firstly, let me welcome today's report and commend Police Scotland on meeting all 30 recommendations. I want to thank each and every police officer and staff member that works in the C3 division. They do a very difficult job in high-pressure circumstances. Now, in his statement, the Cabinet Secretary talks of openness and accountability. So, will he support calls for regular data on the number of notable incidents to be published so that we can monitor the level of mistakes and Police Scotland's progress in reducing them? And given the report notes uncertainty around investment, will he commit today that funding will be made available long term to support the upgrading of crucial IT technology in the C3 systems? Cabinet Secretary. Mr. Officer, can I say I welcome the members' recognition of the dedication of the staff within uh, Police Scotland's Contact Command and Control Division, who do uh, an excellent job and work extremely hard on our behalf each and every day to keep our community safe and to provide as best a response as they can to members of the public when they contact them. In relation to both the points which the member made reference to, there is a quarterly report provided to the SPA on police call handling, which provides that information the member made reference to. I hope the member would also recognise, given that his uh, colleagues have previously raised the issues around notable incidents, that the reason that the notable incident system was brought into place was one of the recommendations from uh, HMICS in making sure that they were properly capturing data around calls which were not being handled correctly uh, in order to use that as a way of improving and driving improvement within the service. And they should be commended for doing that. Um, uh, reinterpreting though that information as though it's a negative for the organisation, I don't believe is 
uh, is constructive. Um, that is not to say that it should not be scrutinised and that they should not be held to account on how they are addressing issues that come from the road to instrument data. However, the information is provided to the SPA at the public board meeting uh, on a quarterly basis to demonstrate how uh, call handling is performing in Police Scotland. In relation to the issue around uh, uncertainty around uh, investment, a key part of what I mentioned in my own statement is the additional investment we have provided to Police Scotland to support them in some of the ICT infrastructure they wanted to put in place to speed up that particular process. Uh, and as the member will now be aware, uh, a number of the recommendations which have been set out by HMICS, the eight of them, uh, which are contained within this uh, final report, uh, refer to wider work which sits within the next three year um, uh, improvement programme that Police Scotland have already set out, a big part of which is investment in areas such as ICT. And that's exactly what the policing reform budget is for. Uh, the £31 million pounds we provided this year to help to support that type of work. So we are continuing to invest in the police service to allow that type of uh, improvement to be taken forward. Uh, and I would expect the service, as it goes forward, to look at what future plans it requires for investment in ICT uh, and to look at how that can be managed as part of that wider improvement work they're undertaking in their transformation programme within the service. I call Daniel Johnson to be followed by George Adam. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, uh, and I'd like to thank the Minister for Advance Sight for his statement. Um, I too would like to welcome this report and its very useful recommendations. However, when we're talking about this matter, we cannot forget the tragic circumstances that, that led to its requirement. The deaths of John Newell and Lamara Bell pointed to significant shortcomings, and I think our thoughts should clearly be with their families and friends as we consider these matters. Uh, but turning to the report, uh, can I also highlight the recommendation on how change in policing should be managed, including through giving uh, the SPA board members an active role in the governance of change uh, to ensure scrutiny takes place in public. So does the Minister agree and believe that these principles should be applied in terms of the significant change that BTP re integration represents? And can I also note the uh, work that HMICS are taking uh, forward in terms of the integration of area control rooms and local police divisions? Local police officers consistently point to the number of police officers available being the single biggest barrier in terms of their ability to respond to calls. So will this re review look beyond just interfaces and onto resourcing levels and how they impact on police responses? Yes. Uh, Sign officer, the member may be aware, as I made reference to the fact that uh, uh, the Scottish Police Authority are presently looking at having a committee which is specifically dedicated to uh, uh, transformation reform. And I welcome that, and I think that's an important part of accountability and the transparency of the process and taking forward any reform uh, within uh, the police uh, service. In relation to the second point regarding the HMICS work, which is going to be undertaken into area control rooms and also uh, how that links in with uh, local divisions, the member will be aware that the reason that this report has been presented to Parliament in the fashion which it is because it was directed by myself. It was directed by uh, the Scottish Government uh, to report to the Scottish Government. HMICS reports, by and large, are not directed by ministers. They are part of their own work programme that they take forward as part of their ongoing assurance work. So the work which will be taken forward by HMICS now on area control rooms is a matter for HMICS and how they then uh, further interrogate any information that they uh, become aware of during the course of that inspection will be a matter for them. Having said that, I've got absolutely no doubt if the member has some concerns about the way in which resources are being deployed by uh, area control rooms, uh, that the uh, HMICS will be more than happy to engage with the member to hear about his concerns and the issues that he may uh, believe that their investigation should look at to ensure that their issues are given due consideration. So what I would encourage the member to do is to engage directly with HMICS on these matters and no doubt they will take them into account as a planning their work programme going forward with the look at area control rooms and how that links with local police divisions. George Adam to be followed by Maurice Corrie. George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. Her Majesty's Inspector of the Constabulary in Scotland have recommended a route map for investment in C3 ICT systems should be developed as soon as possible. Can the Cabinet Secretary explain further what support the Scottish Government is providing Police Scotland to allow this work to be carried forward? Cabinet Secretary. So, an officer, uh, there's already um, a, a range of work being undertaken by Police Scotland to look at its existing uh, ICT infrastructure. And, uh, at the last SPA board, me uh, uh, board meeting, they gave an indication of the level of investment that they believe it may be necessary as they move forward in the coming years. 
Uh, that comes off the back of a recommendation that came from Audit Scotland about having future plans and how they take forward their ICT investments. And I uh, think it's very important that the service continue uh, to make sure that they are looking forward on how future investments should be shaped into information uh, technology. And that includes within uh, the C3 division. I made reference to the points around uh, the additional monies which we have provided to support early investment in some of the work that they wanted to take, undertake in areas of ICT investment in the contact command and control uh, division and some of the benefits that we've now saw as a result of that. And I would expect as they move forward to continue that refreshing of their ICT uh, programmes within uh, Police Scotland. I should say that um, ICT is an important element of it, but also the work they're doing around the, uh, the new uh, assessment uh, model, which they plan to introduce, along with the public engagement model, which they are planning to uh, uh, take forward in the course of the earlier, later this year, um, I suspect will also uh, help to support that work in improving how they engage with the public uh, when they contact Police Scotland. Maurice Corridge, followed by Fulton McGregor. Maurice Corridge. Uh, officer, thank you. I thank to the uh, Cabinet Secretary for a side of his statement. The HMIC report um, shows that in the year 2013-14, Police Scotland's 101 number received 3.3 million calls, but in 2016-17, to 17, the last period for which we have full data, had fallen to 2.1 million calls. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that Police Scotland have to reach out and make sure that the communities know that the 101 number is available, and by taking people off the emergency 999 number, but still hearing their non-emergency issues on the 101 number, is vital to public safety? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, uh, officer, um, uh, uh, I'm sure the member would recognise that uh, 2.6 million calls to 101 is a significant number of calls over the course of a year. One of the areas of work that Police Scotland have been taking forward is to make sure that the service is used appropriately uh, for the right purpose. Uh, and uh, part of the education work that they've been taking forward is making sure that the public have a greater understanding as to when they should use 101 and when they should use 999 but also when they are using 101, that they are using it for police assistance. Uh, it doesn't require an emergency assistance, but police assistance. There, has been, there have been a number of occasions, as the members will all recognise, where the 101 service has not been used appropriately. Uh, and it's been used for a variety of purposes. Police Scotland have published information demonstrating the nature of how it has not been used appropriately. So that change in demand, I'm not saying it's just down to purely people uh, using it more appropriately, but it is a... I think it's a greater recognition the public have around what 101 is for. Uh, but even at that, uh, uh, 2.6 million calls, I think, just demonstrates the level of demand that the service has to meet. But the public um, uh, engagement programme, which Police Scotland are going to be taking for later this year, is about how the public can engage with Police Scotland. And they're looking at a variety of different ways in which that can be achieve, achieved so that people have different options. It doesn't have to be through 101. It can be through other means as well. And that will be part of a consultation exercise which they'll take forward over the course of the latter part of this year, which will help to improve how contact can be made with the police in, an, in a model and in a way that best reflects the needs of the public. So I hope the member will be reassured by that, that police Scotland want to reach out and to make sure that people are using their service appropriately, but they also want to look at the existing model to see if they can improve on it and allowing the public to make contact with them in a variety of other ways other than through the 101 system. Fulton McGregor to be followed by Claire Baker. Fulton McGregor. Thank you, officer, I'll take this opportunity to remind the Chamber and the PLO to the Justice Minister. As the Cabinet Secretary mentioned, the HMICS review resulted in 30 recommendations. Can the Cabinet Secretary advise what improvements have been made in call handling as a direct result of these recommendations? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, in the course of my statement, I made reference to a number of different areas that the, uh, have made improvements around how uh, Police Scotland are taking forward a range of uh, the work that they're now carrying out within uh, the C3 division within Police Scotland, there's been uh, a stability and independent validation uh, of the police modelling programme they have now in place uh, for staffing of the service, uh, implementation of a new uh, training strategy, a new dedicated quality assurance unit for uh, police call handling. They've adopted a new risk and vulnerability uh, training package uh, delivered to all uh, service centre staff. They've also invested in ICT infrastructure, which allowed them to introduce a new single command and control uh, and enhanced customer relation management uh, system. 
They've also introduced a new enhanced performance framework uh, that draws on a wider range of measures around uh, call handling, and also they've introduced a new notable instance uh, process, which ensures that they capture information relating to calls where lessons can be learned. That's some of the actions that have been taken forward as a result of the recommendations made by HMICS, and that's why I expect Police Scotland to build on the momentum that they have achieved over the last couple of years to make sure that they're continuing to refresh and improve the way in which call handling is taken forward in the weeks and months ahead. Claire Baker to be followed by John Finney. Um, thank you. In the recommendations going forward, HMICS do recognise the need for further work to identify and reduce failure demand, recommending a public contact strategy and a risk and vulnerability model. How will the Cabinet Secretary ensure not so much the public appropriate use of the 101 number, which was highlighted in the response to Maurice Corey, but public confidence in the 101 phone number, which my constituents too often feel isn't responsive enough, particularly when they're reporting antisocial behaviour, which may not be judged to be high risk, but it is disruptive for them and their community? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, as ever, when the public contact Police Scotland and if they are not satisfied with the response which they receive, there is a process for that to be escalated and to lodge a complaint with Police, Police Scotland and for the matter to be investigated and reported to uh, the individual where they do have concerns. So there is a well-established uh, process and a robust process for considering uh, concerns and issues which uh, a member of the public may have. And I'm sure all uh, MSPs have get, received representation from constituents at some point uh, where we can refer them into that particular process. Um, I also made reference to the fact that Police Scotland are also looking at introducing a new contact assessment model. Uh, and part of that work and the training for that will actually start uh, later this year. That's a, a process which will help to evaluate risk and vulnerability much more effectively so that when they receive calls and the information they receive in the call, they can then use that to make a, a much clearer assessment of the situation. Training for that will start later this year and roll into 2019. Uh, with the benefits of that expected to start to uh, come into focus um, later in 2019 and into 2020. The public contact uh, strategy which they intend to take forward uh, is the point I was making to Maurice Corey about how the public can engage with Police Scotland and providing wider opportunities for them to engage and report matters uh, to them. Uh, the consultation on that will start later this year and that will involve a whole range of different stakeholders including the public and having an opportunity to shape how that should be taken forward in the future. So the service are uh, very much about engaging with the public and hearing their views on how they can improve the service and a combination of the processes and systems they have in place where people are dissatisfied alongside the additional work that they're planning to take forward I believe will help to make sure that we address the types of concerns uh, that uh, Claire Baker highlighted uh, regarding our own constituents. John Finney to be followed by Rona Mackay. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his report and, like others, would commend them much of the positive work that's, that's taking place, including that highlighted by HMICS, and that was the training introduced to service advisors on the assessment of risk and vulnerability. H however, HMI goes on to say that it was unable to identify any tangible impact in the priority grading and response to incidents which could be attributed to that revised approach. Now, that's picked up Cabinet Secretary in the Recommendation 6, Risk and Vulnerability Model. Um, will the Cabinet Secretary ensure that this work is prioritised, not least given the well-documented concerns about the Vulnerable Persons Database, please? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, I think the member raises an important point, and some of the points I was making to Claire Baker, I think, helped to address some of the issues of concern relating to that particular recommendation. As the member will now be aware, um, as a result of the eight recommendations uh, that have been made by HMICS in this report, uh, much of that sits within the wider body of work that Police Scotland are taking forward as part of their wider reform uh, programme and sits within the three-year strategy, which the uh, uh, implementation uh, plan, which they took forward to the SPA board uh, fairly uh, recently. What I can say to the member is that this continues to be a high priority and the report recognises that. Uh, for the executive team uh, within Police Scotland. Um, uh, when I instructed this report, it was to make sure that we drove forward improvement in how police call handling and police contact uh, was being managed and the unannounced inspections and visits to, uh, the, uh, to uh, the contact centres that I asked HMICS to undertake was about continuing to provide that wider assurance. So a combination of this work alongside the Eight recommendations that Police Scotland will now bring forward an action plan on uh, for their implementation. A number of them are already 
in process and been taken forward. Um, I believe that Police Scotland recognise that this is a, a key priority uh, and that they will continue to drive that forward and it will fit in some of the work they do around the, uh, the, 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 the national database uh, plan which they have, which is already at an advanced stage for part of it being based in Inverness and also uh, in Govan, which will provide support to operational staff who require uh, database inquiries uh, during the course of operations. And that work I would expect to be completed uh, probably uh, into the autumn of this year, uh, once that's been fully implemented uh, at both the base in Inverness and in Govan. Rona Mackay to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide more information on what will be done to ensure call handling continues to improve to maintain high levels of public confidence? Cabinet Secretary. Well, a key part of the, the way in which I expect Police Scotland, and I've got no doubt the SPA will want to continue to monitor how Police Scotland are uh, carrying out uh, call handling and its performance, will be through the, uh, uh, the quarterly uh, update reports which will be provided to uh, the SPA. Alongside that, HMICS will continue to look at how call, call handling is being managed and how it's performing uh, as the service goes forward, and that will fit in that wider reform agenda. Uh, but importantly, um, as the member will also recognise, is that it's important that Police Scotland create a culture within their organisation which is about driving uh, the quality of the service which they deliver to the public. And one of the uh, issues that I believe has been addressed much more effectively uh, by the changes that are now been, have been introduced into the C3 division is the quality assurance system which they've now put in place, the training packages which they now have, uh, the fact that they have external audits that are provided as part of their national accreditation as well, all of which provide checks and balances around how the service is operating and the quality of the service that it's providing to the public. And in that sense, I believe the public can have greater assurance that we have much greater and more robust oversight on how Police Scotland are delivering uh, services through their uh, C3 division and how the public uh, respond to those services uh, when they contact Police Scotland. Lee MacArthur to be followed by Ben McPherson. Thank you. President Officer, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of the statement can I also pay tribute to the work done by Derek Penman uh, and also thank uh, Chief Superintendent uh, Newbigging and colleagues at C3 Div Division for hosting my visit earlier the year, uh, this year and uh, for the, the work that clearly is borne out in this HMICS report. But as part of the process of learning, would the Cabinet Secretary now acknowledge the part played uh, by the rushed centralisation of policing uh, by, his, by this government uh, in creating the problems initially in call handling? And will he also accept that there is now growing public disquiet that three years on uh, from the uh, fatal crash on the M9, we are still no nearer knowing uh, the time frame for a fatal accident inquiry into that tragic incident? Cabinet Secretary. Sign officer, um, uh, I think it's very clear from having directed the HMICS uh, report, assurance review into uh, Police Scotland, I recognise the need for Police Scotland to address uh, a number of issues around how they were handling uh, matters through their contact, command and control uh, processes. Uh, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that the oversight of the transformation of contact, command and control within Police Scotland back in 2014 and 15 should have been more robust and effective. Uh, and one of the real lessons I believe that can be learned from uh, this particular process is to make sure that the oversight body, the SPA, have got much greater uh, assurance around this area of transformation work, which is why I welcome uh, the new chair of the SPA's uh, consideration of establishing a committee which will be dedicated specifically to transformation and reform within Police Scotland in order to have much more effective oversight of transformation and reform that's been taken forward by uh, the service. In relation to the member's uh, latter point, the member will be aware that decisions around uh, the matter relating to the M9 incident is a matter for the Lord Advocate as a live investigation. The member will be aware that the matter has been reported on by the uh, PERC to the Crown Office. The Crown Office have uh, sought further uh, reports on what is a complex matter around the services, Police Scotland's uh, response to that particular uh, incident. Uh, the Lord Advocate has also uh, already stated that uh, a fatal accident inquiry uh, will take place. However, um, that fatal accident inquiry can only take place once uh, the Crown Office have come to a decision on whether there will be any criminal prosecutions relating to uh, that incident. Uh, given that both of these uh, families who were affected by that tragedy are constituents and families known to me, I am um, very aware um, of the distress and difficulties that it presents to 
uh, both John Yule's family and to Lamara Bell's family. Uh, but what I can assure the member of is that the Crown Office are seeking to keep the family involved, involved informed of any progress uh, on the matters and keeping them up to date as best uh, they can as the investigation uh, uh, progresses. But uh, the ultimate decision in relation to uh, any decision around a prosecution or when the fatal accident inquiry takes place is a matter for the Lord Advocate. Thank you. I'm not sure if we'll get them all in. There's still three questioners to go. Um, ben McPherson will be followed by Gordon Lindhurst. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me what steps are being taken to increase and improve collaboration between the emergency services and other partners to strengthen the Gazetteer GPS system used by police call handlers? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, um, the HMICS report uh, considered work around the, uh, the work that's been taken forward by Police Scotland around the Police Scotland Gazetteer, a matter which uh, Lewis MacDonald has raised with me on a number of occasions uh, in the possibility of having a shared gazetteer across the three emergency services. We have a, 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 a Scottish Fire and Rescue gazetteer, a Scottish Ambulance Service gazetteer and we have a Police Scotland uh, gazetteer, all of which operate in slightly uh, different systems. In order to try and progress this uh, matter, uh, we've established the Scottish Emergency Services National Collaboration Strategy. Uh, and one element of its work is to look at having a shared gazetteer for uh, Scotland. Although, as the report does highlight, the uh, Police Scotland gazetteer has been improved uh, and is uh, being uh, appropriately uh, maintained. But full implementation of the uh, collaboration strategy uh, and the work they do around uh, possibly having a single gazetteer for our emergency services in Scotland is one which the strategy will support in developing. Uh, although I do recognise there are significant uh, technical complications to moving to a single gazetteer uh, and we need to take that forward in a planned fashion if that's the uh, uh, the uh, direction of travel uh, and what the collaboration group uh, recognises the right approach to take for all of our services uh, to ensure uh, that we can have confidence in any single uh, gazetteer that's operated by all three of our emergency services. Gordon Linders. Um, as this is a final report, can the Cabinet Secretary advise how the eight new recommendations will be followed through on to ensure they're delivered expeditiously? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, there are matters for HMICS who will only discharge the recommendations once they have been completed by Police Scotland. And any ongoing review of that work will be a matter for HMICS to continue to ensure uh, that appropriate work has been taken forward to have them completed. And Ruth McGuire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide detail on the timescales for implementation of the new contact assessment model and public contact strategy? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Presiding Officer, the timetable for both the uh, contact uh, uh, assessment model and for the uh, public contact strategy is that the public contact strategy will start uh, uh, later this year uh, and the consultation exercise around that uh, will start later this year. Uh, the contact assessment model uh, and the training for that will start to be introduced uh, later on uh, this year uh, and into 2019. Uh, with the expectation that full benefits from that will then be realised towards the end of 2019 into 2020. So work on planning for both of these is a, a, a already been taken forward by Police Scotland uh, and both of them will start to be taken forward uh, later in 2018. Thank you. I'm going to thank the Minister and members. We'll move on now to the next item of business, which is a fairer Scotland for disabled people tackling the employment gap a debate. We'll just take a few moments as well for the Minister and the officers to change seats.